Okay, so in the last video we put out, I decided to make a gearbox. You can see here, this is I, this is how I've improved it. I removed all the gears from it. Um, so, it's basically, it's, it's useless. And these were the types of gears that were located inside of them. Uh, just a proper gear ratio. I wanted to make a 1 to 256 gear ratio and pedal it to see if I could get a really high RPM. I got that to a 256 and it functioned okay. It was really heavy, really hard to turn, but I was able to get it and um, I was able to finagle some of the friction to make sure it functioned. I decided to drop the gear ratio and make it a 1 to 64 instead because I actually have a motor that can output close to 1000 RPMs, which will give us close to 64,000 rotations per minute if I can get this to work. The motor is extremely powerful and throughout the course of this video, I completely forgot that it was as strong as it was, and I almost uh, messed up my fingers uh, trying to work on it. So what we're going to do this video is we're going to try and get flight. That's right. We're going to see how much force we can output, and if possible, can we fly? Can we make something that flies? And you're going to see that in today's video. So to become immortal, we need flight. Well, I don't quite know how flight is going to help us become immortal, I decided it would be a pretty fun video to record. Now, before we get this video started, I would just like to say thank you for subscribing, and if you haven't yet, then please go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't hurt, and you know what? It helps us out a lot. So it's been about a month since I uploaded my last video on my last project, and this kind of stems from that one, as we're going to be using the gearbox, but we're going to be adding on to it a little bit more, and hopefully we're going to make some great flight. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. As you can see here, this is my hoverboard. I made this when I was in high school. I never showed it off before, but I decided, you know what? Now it's time to start using it. We're gonna be using this hoverboard today and well, some parts of it to be able to get us some good flight. Now I have motors, ESCs, all the controls on here. We're going to be tearing it apart and using one of the motors and one of the ESCs for our flight control. So the motor, as you know from the beginning of the video, is what is going to get us about 1,000 RPMs of really fast flight. And then we're going to speed that up with the gearbox to about 64,000 RPMs. Hopefully, it has a high enough torque to be able to allow this to happen. As you can see here, I'm now ripping apart that battery. And I'm going to be taking apart the ESC later in the video. And I'm going to be taking apart everything else later in the video. But we're first starting with the motor. Now, the motor is a really dense, really powerful motor. And it's all raking on this being a really high torque motor. That's basically it. If this thing does not produce enough torque, we can't get any flight. We can't get any lift. It has to overcome the friction that I that I kept from the gearbox. You can only take the friction down so much. It can't get to zero. I tried really hard to make it seamless, but I couldn't do it. So we have to hope that this thing can get at least 500 RPMs, so half of its power and getting a lot of torque. Hopefully this will work. On my hoverboard, one battery functions for two motors, but we're actually going to have one battery for one motor, giving it more power. So there's the battery right there. We have the motor, so here's the motor. It's a pretty big one, my hand for comparison. I have a gear. Just the normal gear, so the motor will be spinning a gear, and obviously that's how we're going to have it connect to the gearbox. So I just finished it up now, and now we have the gear all set. We should be able to now be able to create a casing, and this casing will hold this gear, it will connect to the entire gearbox, and we will have a functioning gearbox ready to go. So we're going to have to 3D print a casing, of course. Um, I'm going to obviously be 3D printing it on the 3D printer that I always use, this guy. I don't know how to pronounce that right, but there you go. If you ever want a 3D printer, this is a great one. It's perfect for all your 3D printing usage. We're also going to need a propeller if we want to get any lift. These are the propellers I'm using. And now we're going to be moving on to the next step. We're going to have to get all the other control devices to control this motor. We're going to need the electronics on the front of this board. And I'm going to be collecting all of that. But first I'm going to grab the ESC, which is the electronic speed controller. This is what's going to allow us to control this giant thing and hopefully not blow anything up. Our electronic speed controller is rated for, I believe it's 120 amp. It's also rated for a 10S LiPo battery, which is really huge. It's giving about 36 uh, volts, 37 volts of electricity, as each LiPo is 3.7 volts by themselves. So we have a 37 volt giant LiPo battery. 
and we have ourselves a small, we have ourselves a large ESC to be able to get that energy. And I found out recently that uh, I can actually use the battery to supply power to the side electronics without blowing anything up. So I'm very happy about that. This, let me see, this is the controller. Channel three is what it's on. Channel three is what controls throttle of just the spin motion up and down. And I only need throttle because I'm, uh, because I'm going to be the controller that'll move it forward and backwards. I only need it to go up and down. Though I do need an exterior, an external power supply to power this. Okay, so everything's basically plugged in. I think I have the ESC correctly plugged in. I'm not sure. What we're going to do now is I'm going to plug in the voltage and see what happens. Uh, it, this motor most likely will beep and then it won't run. If it starts running, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we'll see. Ah, oh, Jesus. It always makes a lot. Uh-oh. So we have common ground going somewhere. We have ground. But why? So we have this, we have that. Ground, ground, power. Power. Yeah, we have, all right, everything's good. It runs. Good. Okay. Let's see if it spins. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be any. Jesus, okay. I can't tell if it, I need something to hold this into place. Or else it isn't spinning at all. Okay. That's fine. We need to hold this sucker in place somehow. Ugh. Or else it's going to spin willy-nilly and nothing's going to happen. Got my finger cut up a little bit there. <laughs> and some of the wires got a little mix match, but... So the motor is wicked strong. <sighs> okay. Ah. Jesus. Okay, so we got a motor connected up to a gearbox, and the motor is extremely strong. Cut up my cut up my hand a little bit when I turned it on, but that works. That works really well. That works wicked good. 
in the next video that I'm going to be putting out, I'm going to make a frame to hold everything together. We will see if the motor spins the gear, and if the motor does spin the gear, and it spins it well, then what we're going to do is we're going to attach one of these propellers on there, and we're going to see how much thrust we can produce. If we can produce up to 100 pounds of thrust, then we are good to go. We're ready to make another one that equals out to 200. We'll see what happens if I provide light. So yeah, stay tuned for part two.